place out. The junta is also trying to stem the flow of information, cutting cell phones and completely blocking public internet use. We would like our parliament to be in line with genuine democratic values. It's not because we want to remove anybody as such. We just want to make the kind of improvements that will make our national assembly a truly democratic. Alors voilà. Voici une histoire, une histoire qui n'est pas la nôtre, une histoire qui est complexe et qu'on a tenté de simplifier. On est deux jeunes backpackers qui ont été électrifiés par le courage d'un peuple. On avait juste une idée en tête, c'était de partager leur incroyable combat, et ce, en sachant pertinemment qu'on contrevenait directement à la loi d'une dictature militaire. C'est une longue histoire d'un pays millénaire, mais pour les besoins de la cause, on va la faire débuter en 1962 à Yangon, en Birmanie, aujourd'hui connue sous le nom de Myanmar. Un coup d'État orchestré par le général Nguyen a transformé le pays en dictature militaire. À peu d'exceptions près, le pays demeurera une dictature durant des décennies. En 1988, la population oppressée s'est soulevée, ce qui a causé tout un virage dans l'histoire de la Birmanie. Et knowingly, I was aware that I was living under the uh, one of the uh, the most uh, repressive authoritarian governments in the world. Monsieur Charles Amou, un militant aujourd'hui exilé en Thaïlande qui est devenu rien de moins que l'éditeur en chef du journal Irawadi, a passé, lui, huit ans de sa vie en prison, alors qu'il n'était encore qu'un adolescent. And they, they said them, OK, you took part in the uh, movement since 1988. You organized a lot of protests and you also published and uh, always joined with your colleagues. That's your crime. That's it. So, and they asked me, Did you do that? Of course I did. <laughs> you know, but you you had no chance to, you know, complain. Uh, you know, this is you know, our right. You cannot say that just 30 minutes. And, and then after 30 minutes, and then uh, they, they, they read the sentence. It was the 1988 uprising. It was an uprising against military rule, one party rule, and the Burma Socialist Program Party. And the so-called socialist economy it was basically a military-run economy. Uh, the military did not want to give up power, but they realized that in order to remain in power, they had to liberalize the economy and allow more free trade and private enterprise. So they came after 1988 as a direct consequence of the uprising. In 1990, the dictature had authorized elections called democratic, but it was not poudre aux yeux. En fait, tenant compte de leur méthode habituelle, les militaires étaient pour ainsi dire assurés qu'ils allaient gagner. Malgré tout, 80% des votes sont allés au National League for Democracy, le NLD. Of course, you know, uh, I voted for uh, National League for Democracy, and then I thought that you know uh, my vote uh, would uh, help uh, transform my country uh, in a way, but actually it didn't because you know my vote just vanished you know uh, like a, a drop of the water on the sea uh, because 15 million voters cast their vote like me uh, in 1990 but you know um, the military regime didn't honor the result of the uh, election because the NLD won by a landslide but worst scenario is uh, you know most of the Alleged members of the, uh, the NLD were put in jail, uh, like us. L'armée a fait l'impensable. Ils ont emprisonné la quasi-totalité des élus et militants qui étaient contre la dictature. We were expelling only three years and four years, you know, at most. Uh, but one day, one, one, they said ten years. So we were quite shocked. We told our inmates, you know, in the cell, they, we were uh, put in jail earlier than us. So all guys, and then uh, we told them, ah, oh, we got a you know, big, big award from the government, 10 years. They were also shocked, and some of them were very angry, you know. But you no, know, we are totally fine, you know, because at the time, we, we thought, you know, this government, you know, uh, wouldn't last long, you know, just maybe a couple of years. That's what we thought, but totally wrong. We were quite naive, you know, at the time, in terms of the political, the real, To understand the real politics, you know, is even the scholars and observer they couldn't, you know, um, I mean, sometimes give a uh, right judgment. So we were wrong. I would say that. Je sais pas si vous réalisez ce que ça veut dire. 
Le NLD a gagné des élections de façon démocratique, mais au lieu de gouverner, ils se sont fait enfermer. L'exemple le plus frappant est celui de la chef du NLD, la désormais célèbre Aung San Suu Kyi, qui a été emprisonnée dans sa propre résidence durant 15 des 21 années suivantes. Un an plus tard, en 1991, elle se voyait attribuer le prix Nobel de la paix en tant que support symbolique envers sa situation. En novembre 2010, suite aux lourdes pressions politiques internationales ainsi qu'aux conséquences économiques désastreuses de la dictature, l'armée a enfin organisé de nouvelles élections démocratiques et relâché leurs célèbres prisonnières deux décennies plus tard. A former general, and uh, before he just wore the military uniform, but after uh, 2010, after he took the office of the presidency, and uh, he just changed his costume. Mais ça n'était pas fini pour Aung San Suu Kyi. Elle et son parti se sont représentés aux élections partielles de 2012. Sans surprise, ils ont remporté 43 des 45 sièges. Je dois vous dire que je n'ai jamais vu un peuple aussi heureux. Vraiment, nous avons assisté à un moment magique d'une lutte de plusieurs décennies, d'un peuple incroyablement résilient qui refuse la dictature, qui soulève pour crier haut et fort sa fierté, et ce, malgré toute la pression qu'il a subie. Les élections étaient plus que la somme de leurs parties. Ce n'était pas juste une élection. C'était un PR stunt, c'était un exercice de confiance. Et c'était un compromis politique pour obtenir l'opposition, ou la Ligue nationale pour la démocratie part de l'opposition into the parliament and to say to the outside world, Burma's open for business and we're on the road to democracy. So from the Burmese government's point of view, the Burmese military's point of view, they have no interest in turning the country to some kind of liberal democracy. They have to improve relationship with the West in order to lessen their dependence on, on China. Now they get the praise from the international community. So that's what they want. So I think that's what they want. They want cash, they want money. Trade, it's been there all along. They knew that Aung San Suu Kyi was popular, they knew that the NLD was getting stronger, but I don't think they accepted the NLD to sweep the ball completely like they did. And this, I think, has shocked them. And therefore, they are taking steps to prevent anything similar from happening in, in 2015. When it be general election. Au moment où on se parle, c'est avec fébrilité que la population se prépare aux deuxièmes élections démocratiques de leur histoire, prévues pour novembre 2015. Avec le trafic de la drogue du triangle d'or, la corruption extrême, les droits de l'homme bafoués, l'énorme écart entre les riches et les pauvres, la guerre civile, les enfants soldats, les pauvres Rohingyas, les autres ethnies qui se battent pour se faire entendre, la liberté d'expression menacée et la junte militaire, les enjeux en Birmanie sont, disons-le, très nombreux. En cette veille des élections de 2015, l'éléphant dans la pièce, c'est les militaires. The laws that allowed these people to be imprisoned in the past or to have uh, their speech censored, those laws still exist. They're still very much on the books. And in that sense, the, the advances in, in, in freedom of expression are very much reversible until those laws themselves are changed such that Uh, it becomes illegal for the government to imprison these people by their own domestic law. Of course, it's always been illegal pursuant to international law, international human rights law. So you can't talk about a genuine rule of law and a functioning legal system when the legal system is, you know, filled to the brim with very unfair, unjust um, and repressive laws. And that's what's got to change. You've actually got to not just look at reforming judges and the police force and looking at corruption in the system. You've got to figure out which laws are really have been misused over the years and get rid of them and introduce genuinely good, good laws that can be used for genuine justice. And of course, when you look at the way in which the Constitution was uh, approved, if you will, by the, by the people of Myanmar through a, through a, through a dubious uh, referendum, And when you break down the Constitution itself, again, its human rights provisions are uh, essentially lacking uh, in their entirety. And where provisions do exist that have effects on human rights, they're negative effects. 
the military has not indicated that they're very keen on constitutional reform. And of course, given that they're the main institution in the country that benefits from the current constitution, they would be the main obstacle, I think, to any, any constitutional reform, especially if those reforms actually target the power of the military, whether it's their 25% reserve seats, their reserved portfolios in the ministries, um, and the fact that they have control over their own budget and, and things like that. Now, in the latest budget, they claim that they have not spending more money on health and education. Before, it was abysmally low. It was like 2-3% on, on the education and what the same on, on health. But it's a military budget. It was 40% or even up to half. But, I mean, this is just figures that they're playing around with. It doesn't mean anything because there's a lot of posts in, in the budget which are military-related as well. Let's say construction. It includes, for instance, construction of military camps. Uh, health, military hospitals. Education, schools for military families. So the actual military budget, a military-related budget in Burma, is way over 50%. And uh, they can you know, play around with the figures and so on, but it's not going to make any difference. I mean, the military will stay, still be the main, most important institution in the country, sucking up most of the budget. You also have the National Defense and Security Council, which is above the government, and that is a military institution. And the, and the Constitution gives the military the right, but it gives the president the right to hand, hand over power to the military if there's a national emergency or a crisis, which means that coups will become constitutional, and they will legalize military takeovers. They won't you know, um, uh, leave the parliament and politics and, and presidential office, you know in the near future. They just want to uh, keep their power, uh, you know, as long as they can. That's their, their main motive. The constitution itself makes it very difficult to actually reform um, because you need 75% um, of the seats to actually do so. When the military controls the deciding 25%, it's going to be quite an uphill challenge. But it's certainly encouraging to see that, that it's a discussion that's out in the open now. and. One of the very positive benefits of, of Aung San Suu Kyi and the NLD contesting in the recent by-elections has been that they are actually raising the issue. So it's, it's part of the national public debate now, which is certainly encouraging, but there's a very long way um, to go to see that turn into a reality. The really big test, of course, will be 2015, um, because that will be a nationwide election. Moving forward in 2015, the challenge will be to improve upon the 2012 elections uh, and to broaden the, the, uh, the extent to which the, the, the fundamental freedoms were protected in 2012. That protection needs to deepen in 2015 and needs to broaden because we're not simply looking at by-elections in which 45 seats are contested, but we're looking at a, at a, at a national election in which the entire parliamentary uh, body and all of the seats in Parliament are up for grabs. And so it really is a matter of deepening and broadening the, the progress that was made between 2010 and 2012. Depuis trop longtemps en Birmanie, un régime militaire prend tous les moyens nécessaires pour garder le pouvoir, alors que le peuple se bat sans relâche pour l'avoir. You know, there is the potential, of course, that 2015 will just be a sham and the military will largely rig the process the way that they did in, in, in 2010. But in, in some ways, the doors are open now and, and people do see that they're, they're living in this you know, imperfect, democratic, still authoritarian system and will really want to push those changes in, in 2015. So, you know, people should look on the more optimistic side of this, that, that they've been given this this small opening of change, they should just push it open as far as they possibly can. In the history, that kind of, you know, honest and sincere and courageous action uh, was needed in every society, especially the, uh, uh, the, in the repressive society like Burma.
对嘛，没得没啥的，俺们也难过，搬来看呢。我当老兵拿嘛，半夜见面嘛，姑姑阿来点呢。到手机也没得没啥的，俺老兵管咱家男们，俺那是不能讲话，我乱走一路被人见面。路来耍西游们，路来耍对口们，路来耍表哥们，路来耍哥们们。他讲我娘的娘们，又来个乱码宝，就那比较给。